Hi friends, Nick here from Technology Lowdown. Thanks for tuning in. If you are just tuning in for the first time, I hope that this video interests you in learning about Pi-hole and uh, how you can get your Pi-hole version 4 updated to the current beta of Pi-hole version 5. Um, so I stress that you only want to complete this if you have the means to be able to restore back to your previous version. Whether that is being if you run Pi-hole on a Raspberry Pi, you can uh, take an image of that uh, SD card that you've got in there so that you can then restore back to your previous setting if the upgrade process doesn't work. Today I'm running a Proxmox VM which I have my pole hot whole setup with and uh, I've basically just taken a snapshot and I'm going to run through the upgrade process and see how smoothly it runs so that I can always fall back to the last snapshot and continue where I left off if it fails. So today I'm doing something new which I haven't done um, before so I'm not sure it could all fail. We will find out today though. If you're tuning in for the first time, I, I encourage you to watch this video. And if you like it at the end, please like it and share it amongst your friends. If you would like to see more videos like this, watch a couple of my others and subscribe. And so let's get into this video of upgrading your Pi-hole version 4 to Pi-hole version 5 beta. Alright, so I've got my current Pi-hole installation set up here and you can see it's an active system. I've got some queries running. Now, I've actually got two DNS systems running on my network at the moment. I'm trialing another system here. It's called AdGuard. It's not as uh, fully featured as what Pi-hole is and in fact it's a bit easier to run. It's more um, designed for uh, somewhat of lesser knowledge with networking. Uh, if we go back to Pi-hole admin, we can see that I've got it set up and there is definitely data in here. I could um, go to the query log and I could search the last 30 days and we should get some results. That might be a bit too big. Last seven days. Oh, I didn't like that either. We'll go yesterday. And it looks like it's running there. All right, there we are. It's returned a couple of results there. Um, so that is something typical of what you might experience with Pi-hole, the occasional error like that. I've always experienced that, no matter if I run it from a VM or with, um, say, a Raspberry Pi. Um, so this is what we're upgrading, Pi-hole to version 5. If we run under settings, we should probably be able to find out the version of it. Yeah, so I'm running Pi-hole version 4.3.1. If you don't want to log into the web interface, you can always log on over to the console. And I'm just going to uh, bring up the password. Now, I'm just going to do this straight from the VM for today. Okay, so um, I've got the console open here on the VM that is running Pi-hole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Firefox and I will grab the code that I need to save me from having to type it in. But uh, basically what we've got here is Pi-hole has uh, made an announcement on their website that they've got a beta test for Pi-hole 5.0. Now they do stress heavily that you don't want to do this unless you um, have the ability to roll back to your um, previous uh, image. So they suggest you can either create an image of your SD card or um, copy your ETC Pi hole. They are one of your options there. A um, couple of changes. They've now got like a database that's running as well in the system rather than relying only on lists and the gravity DB. So they're moving to something which should provide a lot more functionality into the future. Um, some notable features are IPv6 support has been added to the network table, regex and wildcard support for the whitelist, which hasn't been available before, and they've added um, self-contained FTL variant using Alpine Linux. Uh, what else we got? Using FTL variant for Raspberry Pi, using QEM URML Docker image. Not familiar with that. Um, but one of the other things which sounds quite useful with this is the ability to uh, block domains depending upon the endpoint. So I believe that's one of the features. I've read that somewhere. I don't see that here, but I did read that somewhere. So 
enough reading, let's get into this update process. Um, I'm just going to copy that to clipboard, not that it's going to make a difference for the console that I'm in. All right, so the update process looks to be rather simple. So we'll go echo and this command, echo and T, that's good. And then I'm going to go pyhole, check out core release version five. Yep, that's fine. I'll change branches. That's been done. Now it's fetching that branch. Now it's detecting all the changes which are there. Um, looks to be pretty good so far. So what I might do while it's running through this update process is if it takes a while, I might uh, pause the video and I'll come back once it finishes. And I'll just mention to you if that it has failed at some point. Okay, so it looks like that command ran successfully. So let's go pyhole check out the web now, version five. And we will go yes. Okay, so that looks like it's starting to run. And that is done. So let's jump on over to that. We'll see if it loads up. Try it from localhost first. Okay, so it's loading up on localhost on the VM. Looks to be okay so far. Let's go down to settings. And already I can tell the interface looks to be looking a lot different. And we are in the development version. Good. Okay, so we're in it. And you can see we've got these graphs. They are definitely very different. So we look to have successfully upgraded. So let's jump on back over to my main OS and we will uh, give it a bit of a test. Now I'll have to log back in, of course. All right, so that's looking very um, polished uh, compared to the previous version already. We've got the new bars. I just went Control F5 then to force the browser to refresh the page and clear its cache. And we can see that we've got um, the permitted DNS queries. We've got them all showing here quite nicely. Client activity. Let's go to the query log. And we see we've got data there. It's good, that's working there. Graphics, let's see what we can get. Last seven days. And we have a nice graphic there. Let's go to this query log. And let's see if we can get this last 30 days now. No, that's not working. Last seven days, no. We'll go last yesterday. Right, so it's showing those results. Uh, what else do we have here? Settings. So it looks to have taken all the settings across what it needed, which is good. Doesn't look to have lost anything. Let's just open up terminal just to prove a point. And I'll just uh, do an NS lookup. I'll uh, look up, look up golf.com and we'll point it to the server's IP address. Alright, so that seems to be working there. So we're, tell, we're turning the IPv6 addresses and the IPv4 addresses. So it looks like that upgrade process has ran very smoothly. I'm surprised at how well it has ran. Um, so. If that puts your thoughts at rest, the upgrade process from version 4 to 5 does seem to work quite smoothly if you're running a VM. I'm on Debian 10 as it is, but I imagine it should hopefully be just as smooth a process if you're doing it on a Raspberry Pi or similar operating system. But be safe and make sure you have a copy before you complete the process. I've still got my snapshot. I'll keep it for a bit longer. Um, as I say, it's not my main production DNS machine that I'm running here. I'm running AdGuard at the moment. Um, but 
I can always roll back if I need to. Well, thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe and don't forget to tap the like button if you haven't already so you can like this video and it can help push this video up in the YouTube um, rankings. Thanks for watching. Bye.